Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Business AF Podcast. We are having, this is a recording, so you're not, we're not live, but uh, we are glad to have our guest, Jay Matt. He is a radio host, but we are having him on today to talk about mental health. He's an avid mental health advocate for the last three years, and um, we're happy to have you on today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. So uh, would you be able to tell us more about exactly what you do on the radio as a mental health advocate? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the two kind of exist separately. I'm a radio host for a Milwaukee Top 40 radio station, 103.7 KISS FM, Monday through Friday, uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. But I am an active mental health advocate, so I do occasionally talk about it on the radio. I do a lot of it on social media. And I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners and really highlighting the importance of self-care and taking care of your mental health. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that I think that's what really like draw me to like what why I wanted you to have, you know, why I wanted you to be on this show because you know, we talk a lot to business owners, um, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, people that are kind of doing it on their own, but also we want people to be able to make sure that this is something um that they pay attention to and they're aware of so can you tell me a little bit about how you know how you became an outspoken advocate i I guess in your personal in your personal brand so to say yeah so basically there's something called the 22 push-up challenge and i was challenged over three years ago and the whole purpose of the challenge the initial idea behind the challenge is you do 22 push-ups a day for 22 days for the, at the time, 22 combat veterans that die by suicide every day. Uh, The ratio is more close to about 18 to 20 a day. So the number did go down, but that's still a lot of people. Uh, And that doesn't even include civilians. So when I was initially challenged and nominated to do it, uh, I did it for the 22 days, but I saw there was a community around the push-up challenge and there was a guy going for 365 days. And eventually that guy caught that marker and he's been going for like 1400 days. So when I saw this guy just continuing, it inspired me to go beyond the initial 22 days. And then soon I found myself over a thousand days as well. Um, And the mission itself was great for awareness. And every single post that I do to my Instagram account, I share the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline of 1-800-273-8255. And then for those that don't want to necessarily talk on the phone, there's the crisis text line, which you can text hello to 741741. And it's just been very important to me to get all that information out regularly. And the reason why I've continued with it and become such an outspoken advocate is because it's something that impacts my personal life. I'm somebody that has struggled with severe depression and suicidal ideation for a long, long part of my life uh, until I sought out help. And uh, just because I've, I've sought out like a therapist and tried medication and done many things for myself doesn't mean that I'm kind of immune to ever relapsing. So it's just an important thing for me to be aware of and mindful. And I found it easier after I got involved in this challenge to continue to talk about it publicly. It kind of was a check for me to notice when I was struggling or when I was doing well. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that people uh, get down in that rut pretty much where they start contemplating suicide? Not as far as veterans, I can see. Totally why some veterans will get to that point, but for your, I guess, average show, you could say. Yeah, your uh, average civilian, I would say there's no one reason why someone gets depressed. There's no one reason that someone is suicidal. Oftentimes when somebody is struggling in such an extreme way that they're considering suicide, because to me, suicide is not a logical response to stress and whatnot. It just, it's a mental illness at the end of the day. I think there's warning signs, there's um, symptoms of other things going on that relate to suicide, but I don't think there's just one answer. It's just kind of knowing yourself and kind of being able to process what's going on in your life and what might be a a factor. And for some people, they might not be able to ever figure out what's going on in their life that is affecting that. Um, So I think, in my opinion, it's important to talk to a professional, a therapist, or consider medication. Uh, there's so many different ways to cope. Um, 
so did that answer your question? <laughs> I feel like it was a little bit well, roundabout. I mean, yeah, because I mean, there are a lot of variables that go into it. It's different for every person. Yeah. For uh, me I personally, guess, it's yeah. it's a lot of like, you'll get stressors. Um, I think financial stressors is a common one for people. If you just get to the point where you've got so much debt and you just don't see any hope, I think for people, whether it's financial stress or job stress or any stress in general, maybe it's a lack of a relationship. I think over time, if you lose that hope for the future, that's when that depression settles in and gets to a point where it's severe depression to the point where it's like, well, I just don't want to wake up tomorrow. Right. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, I think my, all my stress has always been around money. Um, but I think there's a, and it's not necessarily lack of money. It's more so like just the association and the psychology around financial stability, so to say. Um, right. As a business owner, it was probably my best month when I had my worst month men mentally. Best month financially, but worst mm -hmm. month mentally because it was all of the stress around now I have to live up to what my bank account is or what my... Right where I'm at. And it's like fear of success. People are like, wow, like you, you'd think that, and that I think happens with a lot of people, even um, like the, the famous people that are like, you know, Oh, totally. They get to all of this success and they have anything they want, but then they're like really down. And down. Yeah. And I don't think enough people address the core issue. Like, Mm -hmm. Say what you will about medication. I've done it and I've also been able to cope without it. I think medication to an extent can kind of be like a Band-Aid where it is helping your symptoms that you're experiencing in the moment. But if you're not going deeper and figuring out what is causing the depression and what uh, it is for you, you can't resolve it and have a long-term kind of uh, relief from it. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I know that this is something that's like your passion about it. You're passionate about it outside of your, your nine to five, so to say. Yeah, yeah, um, totally. Why do you think that businesses or, or even companies should focus and and bring about talks about mental health and having people like you come in? Uh, I don't know if you, you have talk, talked about it in your company, but yeah. why do you think this is something that's that's prevalent now in this day and age? I think there are so many demands in a workplace, whether you're an entrepreneur and you're the, the head of your company, or if you're just somebody that works for a company, I think ignoring mental health and supporting your, your colleagues and your uh, coworkers is a missed opportunity in this point. If you really want your company to thrive, you have to allow your employees to thrive and to kind of say, hey, it's a stressful environment. We've got deadlines. We've got goals. You need to allow for your staff to have time to take like a, a mental health day, if you will, or maybe it's really promoting the fact that people leave for a half an hour and take a lunch break where they're not just sitting at their desk and eating and getting the job done. Right. If you prevent that burnout, you're going to allow for your workers to stay with your company. They're going to appreciate your company more and even your leadership. And they're going to want to continue with you year after year. All right. Yeah. yeah I, I think it's very important. Exactly. I was talking to uh, one of my buddies last night, actually, he works for uh, a construction company and, he gets burnt out quite a lot, right? He's mm -hmm. supposed to have Fridays off, right? Just supposed to work four tens, but then now they are working more than four tens, and then also now going on Fridays because they say, well, now we have this day off, we can use that time to do more work, even though you already exceed your forty hours. And then I was telling, right. him, I was asking him yesterday, I was like, would you rather work five eights or four tens? And he said four tens because yeah. X Y Z. But now I don't get to work my four tens because as an employer. I want to, like, for example, one day do something for people that help me grow, right? Because five employees, that means that they're helping my business grow. So mm -hmm. you need to appreciate them just as much as anything else. You know, they're probably the most important asset to the company mm -hmm. uh, because they help it grow. So you want to be able to make them happy and, like, culturally and, you know, mentally, physically help them out. I think it's very yeah. important. And I think it's, it's a big thing that a lot of companies are lacking. Yeah. At the moment, yeah. I think um, also, I mean, I, what, so my question for you in, in terms of prioritizing mental health and, and self-care is very important, I think, to a lot of people. Um, for you, what do you 
do you have advice on self-care in terms of being an employee and maintaining a healthy workplace? Yeah, there's many things you can do at work. Um, I think people forget the idea, like if you're in a cubicle working environment, it's very easy to just sit at your desk for your eight hours or four hours till lunch. Remembering that you can get up, stretch once an hour is a very easy way to get the blood flowing again. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of physical health related things help your mental health too. So if it's get up and take a, a walk around the building or uh, a walk around the office for a couple minutes, that'll kind of get the juices flowing for you. Um, anything, a break from screen time. So making that uh, half an hour lunch break important to you gets you away from the screen and is a break on your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, having a friend at work, somebody, I mean, gossip is one of those things that's a, a gray area. The gossip can be bad and can be good uh, in the sense that you have a relationship with a coworker. If you don't feel like in a work setting, you have a best friend at work, you're not going to be as excited to go to work every day. So if you have somebody that you feel like you can connect with, that is a huge asset as well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I think for, Chris and I, we're kind of like best friends, but that don't work together. <laughs> yeah. We work at two separate co working yeah. spots. The, the bad part is that we have no one in common that we can uh, gossip about, though. You know, like, <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Then you have to gossip on like politics, which is a dangerous place to go. Don't get me wrong, but there's something worth gossiping about. Like, oh, did yeah. you see the episode of TV last night on X show? Yeah, there's something you can bond over. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just miss gossiping of like coworkers. Oh yeah, can you kidding. believe this <laughs> deadline? I know. It's just like yeah, within uh, moderation is the mm -hmm. thing here. Uh, and I think of uh, being active, and that brings up a good point because um, you saw, I saw one of your tweets last week about the Survivor season. Oh yeah. Like and you got a spoiler, and I yeah. saw the tweet, and I was like. Luckily, you didn't spoil it for everyone. Oh, else. totally. Couldn't do but, it to everybody else, but yeah. But now, like, I know that you watch it, and I don't know if you watched the newest episode, but... I did. Yeah. Okay. So now you can kind of be, like, the gossiper, like, on in an online setting. So... Totally. Do you find yourself, like, resorting to online, you know, outlets like Twitter or Instagram to build that community and build that like best friend you have at work if, if you didn't have that in your normal job? Yeah, definitely. I think this speaks well to small business owners and entrepreneurs. At my last job before the one I have now, um, I was the only person in my marketing department that knew social media strategy. So mm -hmm. I had to go to Twitter chats. I had to go to my stories and stuff to include the store, sort of stuff that I wanted to talk about that would help me in my job setting. And through yeah. doing that, especially on Twitter, as a great example, you would find so many people that was in a similar position of, I'm the only one that does marketing for my company because we have such a small budget. So you're yeah. able to connect with them and shoot each other DMs or join in Twitter chats and learn from each other. So you can really uh, build a community through mm -hmm. social media because after all, social media is supposed to be social. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, that speaks to my heart because I'm, you know, I'm active on social and people are like, oh, I hate social media. It's all like, you know, politics and, yeah. you know, fighting and stuff. And I, I disagree. <laughs> I but I think to an extent, you control the environment you want to be in. If you are constantly seeing arguments about politics, it's probably because of who you choose to follow, and you can right. control that really quick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, that's my main advice for people when, when they ask me, well, how can you enjoy being on Twitter when it's always like, you know, politics supporters yeah. on both ends fighting and arguing yeah. and stuff, and I'm just like... I don't, even it. I don't even see it. I mute it. Like, and, yep. you know, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's that, a bad thing that I'm not as up to date on that stuff, but it's also, I can find the news where I need to get the paper totally. or something like that. Um, so um, what's next for you in terms of, um, you know, being a mental health advocate and really being active with this uh, 22 pushups challenge? Yeah, uh, I've gotten over 1,100 days in a row of it. I just honestly don't plan to ever stop the challenge. I know that social media is ever evolving. So if in a couple of years, Instagram goes away, then I'm going to have to figure out where to continue the daily challenge on a different platform. Maybe that's TikTok. I don't really know. Um, but I think it's worthwhile to have that message out there in social media. The thing I like about Instagram is, despite its potential flaws, it's really good at being mentally healthy. It's... Um, 
boosts people up. It does have features where if you are concerned about somebody and the content they're posting, you can do a welfare check on them and kind of alert Instagram to it so they can kind of look into the account and see if that person needs help. Um, and I've found overall from posting social or posting mental health content, because uh, I'm very open about depression and how I have ADD and OCD and all these things, I'm openly talking about it. I don't have trolls, knock on wood. Um, I have a, a genuine community that's there to support me. So I just want to continue what I'm already doing. It's not necessarily adding anything new, but just keeping consistent with what I'm doing, I think is what's helpful for this advocacy. Hmm. Yeah. You said welfare check on Instagram. Yeah. I'm yeah. That. Yeah. yeah it's more in the settings um, or you can, well, I'm just going to open Instagram really quick just so I can potentially see the example and explain how to get to it. So if you're in the news feed, you should be able to top, tap the dot, dot, dot in the right. The hand more hand. Button. Yep. And then it, where it says like mute, unfollow, all that. If you hit report, it should open up. Uh, uh, well, oh, mine says it's spam or inappropriate. Yeah, inappropriate because then you can say you can select suicide or self injury. Oh, okay. And then you can kind of submit the report. So it's a little buried, but it is in there. So if you see somebody talking about suicide or self injury, you can alert Instagram. Oh, wow. And yes, while it can take it down, I'm pretty sure it sends that person like resources. I looked into this a while ago, um, and it, it's been a really long time since I've had to use it. But I remember when it first rolled out, it was something about getting resources to the right person. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind of. That's pretty cool. No, it's yes, definitely. Cool. I have not heard of that before. So that's really awesome if that if that's yep. still in there's also like I think if on Instagram, if you were to uh type in let me just double check it before I, I quote it. Uh I'm pretty sure if you like search suicide, it comes up with a a one eight hundred number of the National Suicide Prevention uh -huh. Lifeline uh related to the hashtag. Yeah, content advisory, um Get support is an option when you search certain hashtags. Oh, wow. Please be advised these posts make it. Right. Uh, get support. So it could be triggering, oh, but you can get support. Wow. Yeah, I before it just even support. lands and loads it. Huh. So that's yeah. why I'm saying Instagram's that platform like, that's like, supportive. Like yeah. You can't really see. Talk yeah. to a friend, talk with a helpline volunteer, find a way to support yourself. That's very cool. Well, hopefully this, uh, you know, people learn about this. Um, if they are struggling, definitely reach out um, to the resources available to a friend. Um, hopefully it's, you know, I think it's just really hard, really easy, I think, for people to get in that loop of negativity and, and yep. depression, um, especially with social. I think it's just right there at their fingertips. Um, but There's like a lot of German... <laughs> yeah, content under suicide for some reason. Um, I think, but starting it before it gets to that point, before they're searching for these things, before they're looking for resources, will really help us. And I, I've just noticed over the past, you know, maybe year, where people are being more open, like you are, uh, about the mental yeah. health and supporting each other. And I think that in turn will you know, have ripple effects through companies and through businesses that are, you know, now prioritizing the culture of their company versus just getting anyone to work there and finish the tasks at hand. Yeah. You know? um, it's even like being acknowledging or being aware of what your own warning signs are. It's, uh -huh. I think it's still something that we needed to work on a lot because there's a lot of people out there that I've even talked to that I'm like, Hey, what are your warning signs? How, can I know that if you're struggling, how that I should reach out to you and help? And they kind of go, I don't know. I've never thought about that. Mm -hmm. So it's okay if you don't know what your own warning signs are, but like reflect on that. So you kind of know for the future and how people can support you. Right. Yeah. I think, and, and it's retraining our brains to really acknowledge that and one, accept it that it's happening, yep. but also know how to like turn it around at that point. Yep. You have to have that perspective shift of knowing that it's okay to not be okay. And that so many people are often not okay. And you just have to register that with yourself. Because I think if you don't, you do struggle when you start to get into those tendencies. And I talk about depression a lot, but it's not just depression. It could be bipolar. It could be so many different things. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. 
Well, what do you guys think about, for example, here in the States, the suicide rate may be higher versus people in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like things of that nature. Like I wonder if it has to do with politics or society yeah. or that we do things from day to day versus like people who live a simple lifestyle. You yeah, know? I'm not too familiar with the stats across the nation, but I do know there's like World Suicide Prevention Day and it shows the numbers down to like the second worldwide and it is staggering. Like oh. uh, I definitely think cultures and religion and what your 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 society, your culture says is okay to talk about with people. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a stat about like African American men are the least likely to talk about suicide because they don't see their peers, they don't see uh, people like them opening up about their struggles, especially like in media and whatnot, it, it goes okay. unnoticed a lot. Um, so I think representation is important. Um, any way that you can get the, the conversation going. Well, yeah, I, I definitely see that because it's, um, I think the only time that I really saw it that where people were talking about their struggles and their emotions and their feelings was like when Kobe passed away because yeah. it, it really affected the entire like, well, a lot of people, not just the basketball yeah. community. It's honestly but, worldwide. He had such an impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but definitely nationwide. Like just hearing from like LeBron, what he had to say and like seeing yeah. magic, like opening up like emotionally and crying. Like it's something that you were not. I, I guess I wasn't expecting it, but it's it's not surprising, at least when you when you start thinking about it. Yep. Yeah. They, they came out and said that to the public? I wasn't aware of this. Um, well, they talked about their feelings and the impact he had on, on them. And so it wasn't something like, it wasn't something about them being suicidal, but they were just open with their feelings. And I think that opened up yeah. more for talking about things that are not normal. In like Shaq got emotional about it too and his uh, broadcast on the topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and About what? Because like it froze for me. So what... What oh yeah, talk about? it's just more or less uh, these athletes and uh, just talking about the impact of Kobe's death on their lives uh, and getting emotional okay. and being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he was Shaq. You know, was crying on the broadcast. Yep. So that's like, you know, it's kind of similar to like maybe when like a a relative passes away and you start seeing like your your uncle and your like grandpa like being emotional then you're like oh my gosh like this impacts more people than just you know a woman that maybe um is crying the whole time you know? yeah i mean well he had a big big impact like mm -hmm. on a lot of people like for example um i don't know if i told you Marissa, but his parents actually actually or uh, kobe's parents live across the street from my parents yeah oh, i did tell you yeah. okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so when i was in vegas this past week i went and just left flowers on her doorstep with oh. a note because, I mean, to me, I don't really follow basketball, so Kobe isn't that relevant as an athlete, but as a person. Oh, yeah. You know, it's right. very important to, you know, assess that and, like, you know, mm -hmm. be sympathetic and empathetic towards the family. I mean, they lost their son. They lost their granddaughter. Right. And right. More than just a basketball player. Yeah. And yep. So. Cool. So um, we have a tradition before we let okay. you go, J-Matt, as we yep. um, ask a random question. Okay. And um, I think, Chris, are you going to ask it or is it going to be me? <laughs> I'll let you ask it this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I um, actually don't even have one this week. Um, let's, let's It'll go. truly be random then. Yeah. yeah. Let's go, let's go the, the radio route since you're on, okay. on radio. Um, if yep. you were to, uh, if you were able to interview and have someone on your show that anyone dead or alive who would it be and how long would your show be Ooh, that's a good question um gosh you'd think i'd have a quick answer at that i genuinely don't <laughs> oh man i'm so great with these random questions because i'm stalling, <laughs> obviously to come up with a good answer and i feel like no matter what i come up with i'm going to be disappointed with myself later uh, uh no take backs yeah. I don't know. I think it'd be cool to interview Billie Eilish because she's the uh, she won so many Grammys. Uh, she's a hot new artist on the rise, uh, and she's an environmentalist. Um, she's got a lot going on, and she has the ear of the youth right now. So I think that would just be uh, overall good. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't know. To me, I would want something short. Something if it's if it's on the air, it's going to be very short. But if it's like a, a video like this, mm -hmm. I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, because I got a short attention span. And I feel like a lot of people that would want to watch that would also have a short attention span. Right. Awesome. <laughs> That's a good answer. Well, I'm glad that you were able to come up with an answer for us. And Thank you. Just after a little stalling. Yeah, it's okay. I had a stall too. Um, so if people want to connect with you on mm -hmm. any platform, they can go yep. to JMAT MKE, which stands for Milwaukee. And uh, any last words for us, for our audience? Hey, uh, I would say if you feel like something's wrong with you or even a friend, reach out, ask for help, be supportive. And uh, if you know somebody struggled in the past and they uh, perceive to be somebody who's strong, uh, reach out to them too, because they're probably the best at hiding it. Yes, that's a good point. Thank you so much for your time and uh, we'll see you online. Perfect, sounds good to me. Bye-bye. See ya.